700 build video. Uh, today we're going to work on our swash plate and getting our uh, swash links built um, and then go from there. So uh, SAB, uh, unlike some manuals that sort of leaves you guessing as to when things have been pre-assembled, uh, whether you need to take them apart and do anything to them or not. Uh, if SAB doesn't say you need to do anything, you do not need to do anything. Their manuals are very thorough. So uh, in the case of the swash plate, this is uh, all assembled. I have no doubt that there's Loctite on these bolts holding things together, uh, top and bottom here. So nothing you need to do here except for install the uh, balls onto our swash plate. So looking at the manual, we're on page 12 now. Uh, we're going to put all of these and the uh, one to pay attention to is our uh, the reference pin here. Make sure that goes in the right spot. Um, so it helps if you orient this piece the same way as the one in the manual and then you're guaranteed to uh, get it right. Always handy to get it just like the photo. There we go. We're good to go. Now this is one of those cases where you definitely want to use red Loctite. If you're replacing the swash uh, my guess is it probably comes with all of the balls as well. Um, but this is just somewhere you don't want to mess around. Uh, the stuff you don't want coming out. Uh, you will lose control of your helicopter. So with that, I'm just going to do a couple of key ones here and then we'll come back. So I'm just going to dip them in the red, kind of roll some of it out. You don't need a ton. And then uh, start driving these in. Again, don't go crazy tighten these, just snug them, give them a little bit of effort, and then call it good. Um, all of these are the same part number, all of these balls. So in some helicopters you'll see there's different lengths for different um, balls and whatnot. Uh, Cell power, at least in one of their helicopters, has some different ones that can uh, trip you up if you're not careful. But these are all the same, like they're all the same H0065, uh, same part number. Oops. Um, so I'll just put this third one in here. We're going to come around with a paper towel and sort of clean up any red Loctite that sort of makes out of here. All right, we're going to triple check to make sure we've got our reference pin in the right spot. It goes right here. Our arm sticking out. Yep. Pull this guy. And this guy you'll need a 1.5 millimeter driver for. Goes right in the end of the pin. Reference pin in there. Again, not a ton of force. And then we just need to do the last four balls inside uh, the top part of the swash plate. Oops, wrong driver. Let's get these in so the step doesn't take long at all. And if you do get any Loctite on your fingers and get it all anywhere in the swash make sure you get all that cleaned up you don't want gummy red loctite hanging out so manual calls for blue loctite here this is one of those personal preference places i like red i don't want these things coming out probably won't come out with blue on them but i just sleep better knowing they're not going anywhere <laughs> go slightly out of order here. I'm going to put that aside, get our uh, page 13 bag here, and get these guys out. These are extremely short. Linkages. Uh, so I've gone ahead and preset our uh, digital caliper for uh, 46 millimeters there precisely um which is the what the overall length should work out to these are going to be at 90 degrees to each other as shown in the picture here so we're going to get our handy dandy linkage tool that sab was nice enough to give us 
and use that to help put these together. Now, unfortunately here, there's no hole in the middle here, so it's gonna get a little funkier. So what I use in this case, these are a set of uh, ball links pliers um, by Lynx, and they've got this nice little channel right here, in the jaws of the plier that's pretty good at gripping things without gumming up the works. So I'm gonna just pinch it about halfway, hold on tight, and then use the SAB tool to tighten these on. All right, you've seen me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take care of this. I'll get both ends of this threaded on, keep them at 90 degrees, and check their length to make sure they're 46 millimeters. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get our swash mounted on our main chassis here that's uh, waiting for things, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I've got our uh, three linkages made uh, right here. And the most important thing when you're doing these is that they are the exact same length. So 46 millimeter is what the uh, manual is shooting for, but if they're all 46.3, 45.6, you know, close to 46 millimeters, but most importantly, as close to the exact same length as possible. Um, this is one of those things where the better your geometry is set up uh, accurately right out of the gate, uh, the better your helicopter will fly. The easier it'll be to uh, level your swash plate, which we'll get into later in the electronic setup. Speaking of which, uh, I highly recommend ordering the uh, SAB swash plate leveler. It is uh, magnetic. So the way this works is our swash will be up here, and this is what will allow us to level the swash, even with the head and all the linkages attached. It, is, it uh, just slides in, it's open on one end, uh, sticks via magnets there so we can run our swash up and down and then check that these uh, are all level. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the build. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and get our uh, head mounted. So we're going to turn the page back to page 12 at this point and uh, work on getting our linkages set up. We've got our bolts that I've gone ahead and pre-cleaned and are ready to go. All right, so let's take our swash plate and our three servo links and work on getting that going. So the swash is going to go in here. But we've got to get the this piece here through here, which is going to be near impossible. Now sometimes on a heli these are plastic and you can bend them. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it and then we'll reinstall it with the swash in place. So just a little bit of force there, should release, there it goes. You wanna go, you sort of put the pressure to release the Loctite and then wait. Don't uh, get impatient and force it because that's how you'll just strip out the bolt. So I'm just gonna give that just another tiny little dab of red. Probably still plenty in there, but can't be too sure. I'll see if the bolt fits through here. Nope, of course not. So we'll have to do this and sort of feed it through here, put it on the driver, and then bring this up and screw it in. So if you're watching this video before you start your assembly, I would wait to install this pin till you drop the shaft on the uh, swash plate, rather, on the main shaft. All right, that's nice and tight. And this is what keeps this part of the swash from rotating, this guide here. All right, and now we can focus on installing our linkages between our servos and our swash. Now to do that, I'm going to use that same set of uh, Lynx ball link pliers, super handy, love these. Um, and we're gonna double check. Now on these uh, SAB linkages, there's a nice logo on what looks like the outer facing side of the ball link. So that means that the logos will go outside the servo. So the side with no logo is with the side that'll go onto the ball. And we're going to use <coughs> these ball link pliers to install these. So just a little pressure and a click. And there's our first one. I'm gonna go ahead and get the servo side on all of these first. Gives me a little freedom of movement here. Check that my logo's on the outside.
systems. That's that one on. <coughs> and then the rest of the outside. And then we'll just make sure these all have good free movement on the servo ball, and they do. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and link the servos to our swash. And we may have to rotate these on the linkages a little bit to try and get it kind of parallel here. So this one looks pretty good, whereas this angle is parallel to this line here in here and if we do rotate these we'll rotate them all the same direction so that we keep the linkages as close to exactly the same length as possible so same thing for this guy I'm just going to give him a tiny bit of a turn this way probably perceptible only to me but it makes me feel better right, click that linkage on that feels good these have got some movement give it just a tiny little Extra turn here, there we go. All right, and then our last linkage here in the back is obviously gonna need more of a turn since this one is essentially. So I don't like to stress the connector, so I'm gonna grip it in the pliers here. Turn it that way. There we go, and then we'll snap this on here. Oops. Anything else? 50 50 shot. I always get it run backwards when I'm not paying attention. All right, so now our servos can raise and lower our swash plates. And then from here, we'll focus on installing the main head. So, take a look at the manual there. It looks like we have a couple of uh, pinch bolts here that will install into this location and the other, and that'll actually squeeze these parts of the assembly together and grab the main shaft, help square everything up. And then we have our uh, Jesus bolt, or uh, bolt that goes through the main shaft. Um, call it the Jesus bolt, because if it comes out or snaps, uh, you might want to pray, because uh, your head of your helicopter is about to come flying off. Um, so, you want to make sure that your follow arms are kind of up and out of the way in the right direction. And then our hole here needs to line up with the hole in the main shaft here so that the bolt will go all the way through the main shaft. So it's a little bit of a dancing act here of holding all the pieces and parts. So helps if you pick up that bolt again, make sure you've cleaned this, um, everything lined up. And there is a lock nut that'll go in here. So make sure the side of the lock nut is the side with the uh, recess right here. And then the side that's just flush is the side the bolt will go uh, through. Uh, and that'll help just capture the nut as you're tightening it. So I'm going to start to slide this down. And then I'm looking through the hole here. This is gonna be kind of hard to see on camera, but I'll see if I can try. We're looking through the hole here. We're watching the main shaft travel through and we're looking to get that alignment so you're trying to get all that aligned through the hole you probably can't see that but trust me it all lines up so again you're looking for the hole in the main shaft get it all lined up perfectly and then just work that bolt through great don't even have to tighten it right now obviously we want to not forget but uh, at this point we are captured at the correct height now what we need to do is attach these linkages and install our pinch bolts and uh, Jesus bolts. So let's start with the Jesus bolt. Get that done and out of the way. Uh, follower arms are kind of annoying and just in the way, flopping around as well as your blade grip arms, but that's all right. All right, so I'm starting that around that way. So starting the nut here, and then you can see once it pushes into that recess, this nut is now captured. So I don't need to put a nut driver on this at all. I can just uh, put a driver on this side here. No uh, Loctite here uh, because there is a plastic insert in that nylock. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten this guy down. It's okay to put a little bit of force here for sure because we don't want that coming out. All right, our pinch bolts, these guys right here. Uh, do, however, need a little bit of Loctite. I use blue in this instance. 
They're backed up by another bolt, so I'm being careful not to. So there is on each side of the head, I'll show you in just a second, a little recess here. And that's so that this bolt will sink out of the way of the follower arm. So once we get that all the way tight, you can see it, it drives down flush in there. Tighten that guy up, make sure the follower arm clears it. Flip around to the other side, you can see the other recess right there. We'll grab our uh, last bolt, get a little Loctite on it. And I'll have that guy in there. Probably a little too much Loctite on that bolt, but we're gonna send it. I'm just gonna make a gummy mess of it. With any look, that bolt's not coming out anytime soon. And we don't stuff it. All right, so. We've now tightened our uh, main uh, bolt that goes through the head. We've got both of our pitch bolts nice and tight. Now all we have to do is uh, attach all of our linkages here. Um, so I am going to attach the follower arms here and here. Let me just double check the picture, make sure I have that right. So this is correct. So we'll see if we can show you this here. So the connections on the swash plate that look like this. Let's use a driver so my fingers aren't in the way. In other words, there's a, it's just sort of a nub that comes out here. Those are the connections that will go to your follower arms. So make sure you get these right. If you get them wrong, uh, you could pop a link and that's bad. And then the directions here that have sort of an arm with the ball coming out perpendicular, those will be to your, uh, sorry, your uh, blade grip arms, so here. So the linkage that you built earlier, the longer ones, these guys will go between uh, these balls that are going sideways and your blade grip arms here. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we'll probably end up popping these up when we level our swash plate, but uh, manual asks us to uh, go ahead and do these now, so we will. It'll just help keep everything from flopping around, so. Uh, let's, I like to do the follower arms first, kind of get them out of the way, and I will use ball link pliers. You can do all this without ball link pliers, it's just a little easier with them, honestly. Uh, while everything's flopping around, it's a pain in the butt, but once you start getting things linked up, it gets a lot easier. So the first one is the fussiest, let's get that in there, come on. Of course it's even fussier because I'm on camera, speaking of which, if you're finding all sorts of things I've done wrong, feel free to post in the comments. Keep in mind that there are more than one way to do things correctly. Get in there. This is sort of fussy to get the pliers in there. On there. Man, these things are a little on the tight side here. Definitely around the right way. It's definitely the right link. Probably because the angle of the swash is not ideal for there we go. I'm just going to use my hands because that seems to be easier than getting the pliers in there. A little tricky. We're going to do the follower arm on the opposite side. Ow. That always feels good. Um. <laughs> All right. Now, let's take our uh, linkages here and uh, do that. So we're going to do the lower one first. Since that's a little harder to get to. Boy, these are tricky to... Got a lot of room to work the pliers in. There we go. There's one. We're going to make sure our SAB logos are on the outside of these connections. The non logoed side goes to the ball in all cases here. All right, there we go. Nice good connection there. Last link right over here. And I'll show you this uh, sideways this time here. It shows up a little better on camera. So we've got our logos on the outside. Great. Take our ball link pliers. Get that guy in there. Same thing. Yep, logos on the outside. Now the reason we checked that the logos on the outside is the ball is actually a little wider on this side than this side. And you can use your eyeball to tell that. Um, if you stare really closely, it's not a big difference. It's just enough that it helps the Link, go on the ball, there we go, nice and tight. And with that, we have our 
swash and links all set up. You can see a little bit about how it all works here. All right, so I'm gonna go around this with a paper towel, make sure there's no Loctite dripping on anywhere. Shouldn't be here, um, but I'll just triple check the swash, make sure everything's clean, and then uh, we'll move on to... Uh, Let's dig into our next step here. Uh, we're on page 14 now. There's basically three sub-assemblies, which I have in three separate piles here. I've gone ahead and cleaned all the bolts. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one. We're gonna take the bolt and slide it through. The uh, idlers here, bit of a tight fit. We've got some green Loctite prepped because the bolts are green here in the manual and we've got our teeny tiny shims again, which we'll try desperately not to lose. So we want to be real careful with the green Loctite not to get it uh, in the bearing here. I'm going to slide our little, whoops, maybe this is where it's going to get fun. Get our shim on there. And then I think what I'm going to do is grab my awl again and use that to get the green Loctite on the tip here, I'm gonna use gravity to let it not get into the bearing. Just gonna push it into the threads with my fingers, make sure we don't have too much there. And then I'm gonna sort of pinch this together so we don't lose the uh, little shim there. I'm just gonna snug that up, make sure it spins freely. And then let's go ahead and do the other one. Which is rolled across the bench. All right, so we got that. We'll get our little teeny tiny washer on here. Change hands. We'll get some green Loctite with the awl. Okay, just on the first few threads there. Again, trying really hard not to get any green Loctite in that bearing. this and of course I've just managed to flip it and almost lose the washer I'm not gonna edit this stuff out because honestly this is the reality of some of this stuff is just fussy and you're gonna drop stuff and sometimes you're gonna drop something and never find it again and have to order the parts that can get crazy frustrating so Check both of these are snugged up. Make sure they rotate freely. Great, that's our first sub-assembly there. We're gonna move on to the second one here. We're going to take our uh, belt tensioner, and this has a up and down on it, and there's a little lip right here on this side. That side's gonna face down, and even we'll tell you that in the manual. And it's kind of the same rodeo here. We've got a bolt through an idler, we've got a little shim, and then we'll get a little green Loctite on there. Ugh. And every time I get my all out, I always want to, well not want to make the joke, but I almost accidentally make the joke that it's my favorite tool and I use it all the time. But uh, in my defense, I am a dad, so I'm allowed to make dad jokes. Again, let's make sure that spins freely here. And then we've got that sub-assembly ready to go. Moving on to the third sub-assembly here. We're going to take our rail here. It's got a uh, slanted end here that we're going to orient that way. So we've got this like that. We've got our piece with our idler on it. We have a brass bushing here, it looks like. That's gonna go underneath here. The bolt will just go through it. Now we have a little, what are they calling this? The tensioner column this little metal piece here. It does have a little hole in the top there. We wanna make sure it's oriented up. And we're just gonna stare at the manual, slide the bolt through there. And then we've got the spring. The, looks like there's a slightly longer tail on the spring that'll point down. 
And then this little end is going to go into the keyed section of this piece here, so you can see that there. So we've got that part of the subassembly down, and then there's a, a zoomed-in drawing down here in the manual that denotes which hole this tail of the spring will go in. So we're going to orient this just like the picture, because that helps my brain, and get this right and it goes in the second hole, it looks like. So we're in the second hole of this guy here. Still haven't put any Loctite on, and then we've got, so looking at it from the top here, let's make sure, no, this looks wrong, see? So now that I have it oriented exactly like the picture, pick this up, get it in the, interesting these two pictures this looks like the second hole but this is definitely the third so get yourself oriented like this get it in the third hole there and then we are good to go all right so this is looking like the picture that's always promising all right lastly we need to get this uh, bushing on and then we're gonna do the same trick with the awl to get some green Loctite on these threads here. Works remarkably well. I'm just kind of push those into the threads a little. All right, now, there's a little zoomed in drawing here that tells you where to send this bolt home to. It goes in the furthest outside hole. Oops, of course the bushing falls off. Another one of those dealios. So furthest outside hole, got our green Loctite on there, alright, now go ahead and tighten this down. And there we go, now we have our spring mechanism holding this like so. Alright, and that is uh, page 14. All right, so this next step, we're installing our uh, idler pulley that we just built, um, all of them into our main frame assembly here. So I've got the frame assembled, uh, laying on flat on its side, um, so we can get to these bolts here. And this is a little tricky because this piece is under tension with the spring. So what you need to do is you set it up like this with your spring on top, and you're gonna move the idler pulley forwards and then this little piece here is gonna to need to stick through here. And then we're gonna put four bolts with finishing washers through these four holes. So I'm gonna relax that for a minute. And I like to go through the finishing washer first and then get a little Loctite on there. And work it around with my finger. Get it into the thread. All right, now this first one's gonna be a little fiddly. So we've got the idler moved up. We get our first hole lined up here. And once we get a couple of these bolts in, it'll start to get a lot easier. Uh, don't go crazy tightening the bolts until you have all four. And even then don't go crazy, but just put a little bit of uh, tension on them. So the second one I'll do a little closer. Actually, I think we can do this one all the way at the end here. If you're wondering where my left hand goes all the time, I'm just wiping it on a paper towel. All right, so there's that guy and that guy. I'm gonna leave them a little loose. All right, two more here on this side. And we'll show you uh, how it looks all put together. You know, you can order black finishing washers for these. I couldn't find them in stock anywhere when I looked, but that would be pretty cool. All right, one more.
All right, with that, since this is the last one and everybody's all aligned and nobody's cross-threaded, we can go ahead and send these all the way home. Make sure you get all four. Great. All right, so now we're gonna do essentially the same thing on the other side, except we don't have the uh, pulley to contend with on the other side. So I'll do that uh, off camera. Basically, we're just flipping the frame over and just installing this uh, bare rail here on this side. And then we're gonna put our other pulleys into the top of that in just a moment. But I will be back after I get uh, this other piece going. All right, so next piece here is to from the underside here. So we're gonna position ourselves just like the manual here. We're going to bolt in our dual idler assembly here. And if you look, this is gonna be a little tricky to see. One of these idler pulleys, it's this one here, is slightly raised. There's a little bit of a bump right here in the metal rails. And the manual says that the idler that is slightly raised go towards the tensioned idler. So this one that's slightly raised will go towards the side with our tensioned sprung uh, idler here, this guy. So let's go ahead and it's gonna go down this way and it's going to bolt into the second hole in here. So. This hole here and this hole here, not the first one. So we'll go ahead and get that just test fit. Fits without any trouble. We'll get a bolt prepped with some Loctite. Just need a little more here. Try not to put too much out at once. Okay, and then seat our bolt again, second hole in. And I'm just gonna get this kind of finger tight here, super loose so I can get the other side seated. Grab that bolt, triple check you've got the slide, the side that is slightly raised closer to the Tensioned idler, and then same thing, second hole on this side as well. Whoops, a little too much foot spa on that one. Rotate the head a little bit will help. And I'm in the right hole there. Let me rotate this up so you all can see. So we're in the second hole. The first hole is a bit, you can see them on both sides. And then we're just gonna Snug these up. And there we go. That's it for page 15. The next step we're gonna work on is applying the decals or the side frame stickers to the lower side frames. Now we're gonna do one together and uh, show you how it's done and then move on from there. But this is where your raw and my raw may start to look different because I'm, although we'll do one of these together, I'm not actually going to use uh, these decals here. So, nor am I going to use the yellow raw canopy. So I'm gonna put these aside. Um, what I will be using for my raw is the new white canopy um, that is uh, this beautiful black and white design. Uh, from SAB. And then, although the white canopy does come with a white decal sheet, just like the yellow one does, I'm not going to be using those. Uh, a gentleman named Rob Cherry, who you can find in the uh, RC Heli Hangout group on Facebook, uh, 3D prints these uh, custom side frame pieces, and you can talk to him about color selection and whatnot, uh, that I use on my RAWs. I think it kind of just spices them up a little bit, gives them a different look. Again, one of the fun things about the RAW is how much you can customize it and uh, make it your own. 
I will, uh, <coughs> excuse me, also be using a uh, couple of decals uh, from a gentleman named Jason Blaylock. You can also find him on the RC Hellingham on Facebook, who does some custom lettering stickers for the Raw. I'll show you those later when we get there. So uh, some fun touches for mine. But as far as the build video goes, we'll touch on what's stock in the kit and how that works together first. And then uh, you'll see me add some of these custom touches to my own. Okay, so let's talk about putting these stickers on the side frame. So obviously you're going to have to make a left and right. This is the right side lower frame and the left side lower frame. And the stickers will go on the opposite side. And the way these stickers work is once we peel these, you'll start to see, but really you're just using the holes in the side frame here uh, as your alignment. So uh, you'll peel the sticker off we'll do now home is a little bit fun get it started oh there it goes and then the dots nicely stay behind now these stickers are pretty friendly to being repositioned so I like to take the top and key it there and then we'll work it down the side frame from there. So you want to center these screw holes in the windows. We're going to get this first one in here. That's pretty good there. And then just gently work it down with your finger going from one side, kind of pushing it to the other. You can use a credit card. You can use a rag to kind of work all the bubbles out of here. And then it generally lines up pretty good down the side frame. Um, so a couple of spots with a couple of bubbles, but we'll work those out. So you can see, without a lot of effort, it um, doesn't take much to get it looking nice and flat. I'm actually going to peel this right back off since I'm using the uh, Rob Cherry side frames. Um, but in this step, we'll just go ahead and put the stickers on both sides of the frame. Uh, as well as that, we're going to be adding these uh, double-sided tape and... Uh, spacers here to the back side as well. So if you flip it back around the other way, you can see manual details very clearly where these go. So in the sticker sheet, they've got these nice little tabs that help you pull these up. Oops, still fussy. Pull that up there. And then you can just get it aligned. Perfectly, there we go. With the holes here. And then if you take a sharp blade. Uh, I'm just gonna use the end of my calipers, which are pretty pointy. You can just peel up the top layer here, leaving the tacky disc. This is double-sided little discs here. And then what you might want to do is find the largest driver you can that fits through the hole. Looks like it's probably going to be a two millimeter. Yep. And we're going to use this just to help us align this washer. So I've got the two millimeter nice and straight and square. Go ahead and stick that down. And then look, we've got everything perfectly aligned so that uh, our spacers are lined up well. So use a two millimeter driver through the holes, double stick tape, peel it off, and go ahead and get the one, two, three, four spacers per the uh, backside of each frame. Uh, set up and aligned. And then now that we have our three uh, spacer pieces on here, we're going to install one more of these block nuts in this position here on the back side of the frame. So we've got that around the right direction. Get that all aligned and hold it down right there. Take our little screws here. A little bit of Loctite on there, and drive that in. And there we go. So now on the back side, you see three of the spacers plus the block. I'm actually not going to install my special uh, side frame pieces uh, until the build gets a little more finished just to keep them nice and safe. So I'll stick these aside. So my side frames will appear uh, bare for a little while. 
until we get a little bit further along in the build. So uh, we've got this side frame done. We're going to go ahead and kind of orient them the same way the manual. Make sure you do them uh, in the correct order and go ahead and do the other side. So I'll go ahead and get this side done and then we'll continue from there. All right, at the end of that step, you end up with uh, two symmetrical uh, frames. Again, you'll, you'll have stickers on this side if you're building it stock. I'm going to leave them bare until a little bit later in the build. So moving on over to the next page here, you can see it's time to join our lower side frames with uh, the uh, main frame assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and get those parts prepped and uh, we'll come back. All right, so now it's time to install our side frames to our main frames. And they're going to take advantage of these uh, block nuts we installed earlier. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, frame pieces that Rob Cherry made for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and peel this thin little piece of double-sided tape here. And we'll line it up over the holes in the frame nicely. And just drop it in to place with hopefully everything aligned. That looks good. It's only a thin strip of double-sided tape, so it can shift a little if need be. And then uh, we're going to use the furthest rearmost bolt hole and the <clears throat> finishing washers, just like before. Now, these are a captured lock nut, so there's a plastic insert in there, so we're not going to use any Loctite there. Uh, I'm just going to sort of work this through. I've got to go through the frame, the hole in the finishing washer, and then the spacer in the back. So I kind of pre-get everything through. There's a little bit of friction there um, to get it going. And then the other bolt hole will be this guy here uh, in the front corner. Again, sort of work that through, get everything lined up. There it goes, nice and flat looking. And then we'll go ahead and get these started. I sort of like to do them one at a time. Just get a couple threads through that lined up and then do the back one here. And then we can go ahead and send it all the way home. Just gonna push that flat here in the front, tighten up the back. just going to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then now uh, we'll continue. All right, so the next step is to work on assembling our uh, landing gear or skids. And the first thing you have to do is take these little uh, plugs uh, here and slide them in to the ends of the landing gear. Now the manual shows a little bit of CA glue holding these things in. Here's the thing. The only way I could get these in, they're not a press fit where you know you can just push them in and get some glue on there um, at all. They're extremely tight and I tried using a heat gun on here to sort of expand the metal a little and then push them in. No luck with that. Maybe I didn't have enough patience, but uh, sometimes you just need to use a hammer. So uh, yeah, that's what I did. This is a dead blow hammer, so it's uh, you know not quite as forceful as say a regular one. Um, and I just whacked it with a lot of force. Um, and I also banged it against the workbench, like watch your volume here. So and just pushed them in that way. And that got it in. Uh, sometimes you just gotta use brute force, honestly. Um, maybe there's a better way or a more sophisticated way, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's okay to use a hammer. All right, I'm going to go smash this last one in. And, uh, I got to tell you, if these come out because I didn't use CA, I will be stunned based on how tight a fit they are. So let me smash this one in and we'll come back. So just in case you didn't have enough fun with these, uh, double-sided tape sticker dealios. We've got some more to play with here with our landing gear. These guys are going to go on the outsides here. So we'll get this guy on here and then again I'm just going to use the sharp tip of my caliper here just to peel off this top. 
top layer there. And then we take these uh, spacers. They're the same either way. No real way to get anything to align it other than your eyeball. So I'm sorry if my hat's blocking the shot there, but you can see these just stick on in alignment with the uh, holes for the gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three on uh, this piece of gear and the other half of the skids and uh, we'll continue from there. All right, this uh, step where we're adding the skids to our frame assembly here. It's gonna be a little fussy to get aligned, so we're just gonna go slowly. Uh, I like to get both skids mounted uh, onto the frame first before I slide the skid tubes in. Uh, it just helps things get all aligned. And then I don't tighten anything until I like the way it's sitting. Put it on a nice flat level surface. Um, make sure you like the way the skids are sitting, the angle of the, the tubes, the toe in, all that stuff. Make sure it's looking good from a, a few couple of different angles before you start tightening things down. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and start here. Our two skids here are both the same, so it doesn't matter which is the front and the back. And the front of the helicopter, by the way, is this side here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, these guys will rake forwards here. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's maybe try and get this on its side just for camera's sake here. And we're working pretty much exclusively with lock nuts in this step, so no lock tight here. All plastic lock nuts. So let's do the rear set of gear first. It's going to go into this center hole here. And it is the three by 22 millimeter bolts, which are these very long ones, I'm sure. But just to be sure, we grab this caliper and check here. And yeah, that's the 22, okay, great. So we got these sandwiched in between like so. And whoops, I forgot the finishing washer. Don't forget the finishing washer. Let's try that again. There's skids in there, get it all lined up. And just trying to get it finger tucked into there for now. So we get the other side in, just get it captured. We're gonna leave this way loose until we get the skid tubes in. So we're gonna flip this over to the other side, get the other side in. Don't forget the finishing washer. Plenty of movement there. Leave that loose. Let's go ahead and do the front set of skids. Now for this set, we're also bringing in the cheeks, which is what I call these parts here. And for that, I also have a special uh, cherry designed part here that will complement the other side frame pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these Applied. Same rodeo here. Uh, if you're doing this at home, you're putting on your stickers for whatever canopy at this point. And I'm just going to get this lined up with the holes in the canopy part. Just like that. Stick that down. That's that one. And then we'll take this guy here. Same thing, pull the double sided tape off, get it all aligned with oops, our bolt holes as best we can. Push it down firmly. All right, so now we've got our cheek pieces prepped. Because so we've got to work those into this step. So we've got some long bolts and short bolts. We're gonna use finishing washers for all. So for each side, you'll need a long one and a short one prepped here. So it looks like the 22 size, 22 millimeter bolt goes through the 
middle hole here, right? Yep. And that is the one that will go into our skid. So let's get that in place, which will go in the front here. Let's get that started. Just sort of want to get it to the point it captures the nut. There we go. And then our medium sized bolt that we've captured is going to go behind that and it's going into the blind nut in the frame or the block nut they're called, sorry, which is a blind nut really. Um, I'm going to leave that super loose and come around to the other side just to get these skids starting to look like something. Again, finishing washer through our side cheek in the front position here. Just need a little help to get this one through. There it goes. There's no actual threads here, I'm just... All right, so let's get our skid lined up. Sorry, I'm blocking you again, I'm sure. Right, I'm just gonna get this to the point it starts to bite on the nut. There we go. And then take our head length bolt and head into that blind nut here. And I should check alignment first. There it is, right there. I think. There it goes. Now we can start to snug at least the back parts down. I'm going to leave the skids pretty loose. So the skids are still got some wiggle room here. Alright. So it's starting to look like a raw. Okay. Now we have this bar here, which Got a couple of screws that we'll head into and our skid pipe. So let's start with the skid pipes at this point. So we're gonna slide these in from the front. Got nice logos on the side that we're gonna to wanna to make sure look lovely and straight. They're gonna also help us sort of center the skids. So I just sort of center the logo between the skids and get it looking perpendicular. And then that's what I'll use to drive our grub screws in, or set screws, which are these little tiny guys that are really easy to lose. So let's, I really want to drive these in. I would love to show you this on camera with a better angle, but I think I really want these to be nice and square. So I'm just going to keep it upright like this. Slide a little more, oops, this way for you. And set screws will go right in here into the side of the skid and you don't have to go crazy tightening these just enough that the skid can't move the skid tube can't move in the uh, <coughs> piece there And this is one of those things where you'll check everything a couple of times just to make sure everything's sitting flat and pretty. That we like the way that the skids and the skid tubes and how it looks from the front and the back, all of those places. So, I like to check. All right, so that's pretty good on that side. We'll spin it around, do the same thing on this side, and then. Once we have these kind of biting a little bit, so again, I'm gonna get the logo centered between the skids, looking straight up. And then tighten these down. Like that, so you can, oh, there's just no good camera spot here for this side, sorry.
All right, so now that I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all these skid bolts and then uh, check that everything is okay. So I gone ahead and gotten everything tightened down. Everything's looking good, it's sitting flat. I like the way the logos are centered on the skids. And uh, you kind of see the black and white scheme starting to come together there. Uh, last thing we need to do is to sort of put this uh, dog bone, I guess they call it a canopy spacer, uh, in between here and just get that bolted in. Uh, they show that uh, you can use an M3 here in the manual, just looking at that, uh, just sort of to get the alignment here, because there's some extra pieces that'll come in here uh, and sort of help get everything aligned, but uh, we don't have those yet. Uh, I don't think there's a big need for that at this point. So um, there's a nice top view here that sort of shows you the direction this is gonna go. It'll go uh, just like this orientation right between and then just bolt right in. And uh, for this portion of it, there is a captured nut uh, involved, but the way this is gonna screw in, we will use Loctite on this little screw here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done, and then we'll uh, wrap things up. All right, so I went ahead and installed this dog bone here. Did have to peel back these uh, plastic side frame pieces. You won't have that problem with the sticker to get those Screws in, they go in right here with a little bit of Loctite. Uh, just make sure that this bolt hole is aligned with where the captured nut is, which you can see right here. When we add our canopy side pieces that come down from the top, they'll overlap and there'll be a bolt that comes through there and uh, is captured that way. So with that, uh, that wraps up uh, this section here. Um, we've got a uh, nice bit of the helicopter together. It's sitting on skids for the first time. So feeling pretty good about our progress uh, to this point. So thanks for watching. Uh, look for the next installment soon. Thanks.